Hi, in this video, we are going to benchmark Microsoft newly released framework for inferencing Hummingbird. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about what is Hummingbird, what is the purpose of benchmarking, and why do we need a framework like Hummingbird, right? So Hummingbird is a library for compiling your trained machine learning models. Now, this trained machine learning models can be trained on any tool or any language, right? What they are trying to make is it, they are trying to make it language agnostic. And once you have the trained ML model, you can just convert that them into a tensor computation. So once you have a tensor computation in place, what you can do is you can vectorize the output and run it on GPUs or any device accelerators. So that is the main purpose of this particular tool. Now, today what Hummingbird does is Hummingbird supports a variety of tree-based classifiers and regressors. So when I say tree-based classifiers, they today support like scikit-learn, decision tree, random forest, light GBM and XGBoost classifier and regressor, while they are planned to add more in the future, right? If you see the link over here on the top, this is details uh, that the, this is a paper that has all the details and it has a lot of benchmarking stats as well. Now, one of the stats uh, that we are going to cover today is XGBoost, right? What what the paper claims is like by using um, by, by 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 using the Hummingbird package, uh, XGBoost uh, performance can be accelerated. Now, we are going to validate that claim by testing it ourselves. Now, why do we need a framework like this? If you see, there are a lot of real-world machine learning application where we need very fast inference. Now, a typical example is uh, a hacker enters a, a network of an uh, organization. We need to catch that hacker as soon as he enters until he steals the data. So we literally have some microsecond or millisecond to detect that hacker is in a network and stop him. Or it can be a credit card fraud. Somebody goes and swipe a credit card. We need to approve or decline the transaction. And typically at the end of the day, you have some few milliseconds to action on it. Like once you approve the transaction, uh, the the fraud the fraudster might have taken the uh, taken uh, the particular merchant uh, whatever is buying and uh, ran away, right? So it's very difficult to catch him. But so you want to detect as soon as it happened. Even if you go, you have to go through police, and uh, there are multiple aspects to recover the money back or the product back, right? So that's the reason you need some uh, low latency framework. But at the same time, XGBoost itself is very highly optimized for inferencing. So does it make sense to use one another framework is what we are going to see, right? You can read this paper to see all the benchmark. I'm not going to go through the paper, but let me start with uh, start with the code part of it. First, we will uh, run XGBoost, benchmark the output. We will do for uh, single uh, record inference. We will do for uh, batch inference. And then similarly, we will do it on CPU, GPU. And similarly, we'll do it with Hummingbird. This, should, this will be a very short video. I, I hope so. Right. So let me first check uh, whether I have GPUs in the environment. If you are on Colab, may make sure you select the GPU environment. Here you can see I am allocated a GPU. I am like allocated Tesla P100, and then I have around 16 GB of memory over here. Right. Uh, I have already trained a model. Uh, one of the one of the data set that they are compared against in the paper is called Core Type. I am. Uh, I have trained the model in the exact same data set. I have downloaded the model and also have downloaded some test data set. Now, if you want to know the training part of it, you can click the link on the top and watch my previous video. I used the exact same data set in my previous XGBoost video to train it. So if you see on the top, I have already trained the model and what I have done is I have saved the model over here. Uh, and then uh, similarly, I have uh, saved the test data set over here. So I'm just saving a NumPy array of test data set, which I'm going to validate. The test data set has around 145K records, which I'm going to benchmark on, right? Uh, I'm not going to sit on the training now. It's going to take some time. So you can try it out. You can watch the video. I will also share this particular notebook in my GitHub repo. You can go and download it and do it by yourself, right? So let me import the XGBoost and NumPy package first. And then let me load the uh, test data, which we are going to benchmark it. You can saw on the top, I have saved the test data. What I have done is I have uploaded this test data and the model in my uh, collab environment. So I'm going to just uh, load the test data and then I am going to uh, just quickly view my test data. So if you see this test data, it is nothing but a NumPy array. Uh, it has around 54 columns, 54 features. Uh, that we are going to use and predict like between seven classes. Uh, what is the cover type of the forest area? That is the idea, but we don't have to need to know more about that part. It has around 145k records and 54 features, as I said. 
All right. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this data set. I'm going to create a D matrix out of it. Now, when we talk about XG boost, right, uh, you what you do is you create a D matrix and then pass it to the uh, predict function. That's what you do. You can either use this or you can use the scikit-learn API and directly pass a pandas data frame on NumPy array. But I'm going to use D matrix in this case. So what I'm doing, I'm creating three D matrix. The first D matrix, I am taking all the test data and then passing it to d test underscore all in the second d matrix i am passing or taking only one row and then passing into d, d test underscore one and the reason is i want to evaluate first for a very large data set the second for a single record in the third case i am taking 10000 rows and passing it to d test underscore 10k i want to evaluate for 10k records i am getting benchmark against multiple size of data set so I have the D matrix. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load my trained model. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use CPU to uh, inference the uh, inference the incoming data. Now you can check how to do in CPU and GPU. I will show it to you. First, let me do CPU. So what I'm doing is I am calling the XGBoost booster method. I am assigning n thread to. You can just remove the n thread at the n thread as well. N thread is how, how you want to parallelize your execution. Now. Uh, the, the way I have trained this model is, let me quickly create an uh, text and write it on the top. I have uh, put the num n rounds, that is the number of tree to be created as uh, 1000. And then what I have done is, I have uh, tree depth, tree depth parameter to uh, 10. Now these are the two parameters that I use to train the model. So since this XGBoost is an ensemble model, it is trained for around, not 10,000, I'm sorry, it is trained for around 1000 trees. And within each tree, the tree depth is around 10. Now the way XGBoost executes it, it's going to go and uh, we're, we're doing the execution time, uh, it's going to go and uh, execute each and every tree, get an output based on the data. And then finally you have 1000 output and then it's going to combine and add all the output and then apply a, uh, apply a sigmoid or software, softmax function, right? Depending on the classification. Uh, whether it's a binary classification or multi-class classification, right? So in this case, uh, in this case, basically what I have is I have thousand rows and ten node dip. The model is pretty complex, so it will take some time for inference. That's why I have created this uh, this kind of model with high complexity, right? So let me let me uh, load load this particular model. I have the XGBoost model. I have the booster file. I'm calling the load model method, and now the model object will have the XGBoost model. Now let's start our inferencing part of it. Right. So very thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a single record, the dtest underscore one data frame, and then I'm going to call the model dot predict function. I am telling time it and I'm telling three iterations, so it's going to pick the best of three iteration. There is always a overhead when you do the first inference because the data has to get loaded into the memory and get cached, or the model has to get loaded into memory and get cached. Right. So that's the reason I have get three rounds. Let me run this. And then it's going to run it and then it's going to tell me how much time it took. What is the best iteration, right? If you see over here, basically it is telling the best of three is 14.1 microsecond. So to, to inference on one record, it has taken only 14.1 microsecond uh, to, uh, to basically execute the thousand trees and 10 node depth. Now, when building a boosting model, typically the second tree is dependent on the first tree. The third tree is dependent on the previous two trees. That's the way boosting method is built because the boosting method, the subsequent trees tries to correct the error of the previous tree. But during inference, there is no restriction as such. You can run all the thousand trees in parallel. Right. So when you are deploying a model, you can you can heavily customize it. You can run all the thousand trees in parallel and then you can get the data out during inference time. There is no such dependency. Right. So that's why you can set if you are a good number of cores in your system, you can set the end thread parameter that I have set to two, even like 20 or 30 or whatever it is. Right. So here, here if you see the 14.1 microsecond for a single record is the best. Right. Let me run for 10K records and let me also run for all the records. Right. So first, let's wait for the 10K. So one uh, record took 14.1 microsecond. And for 10K records, it took around 319 microsecond. So yes, as the record increases, the, uh, the inference time will also increase. And remember, this is on CPU. That's what we are doing, right? For all the records, it's going to take uh, some time because the first time it has to load the um, uh, data into uh, internal memory and then uh, and then basically iterate it. Uh, so it is going to take some time. Uh, before that, I will cover the next part of it, right? So after this, we have a CPU benchmark. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a GPU benchmarking. 
in the gpu benchmarking what i am going to do is i am loading the booster method i am calling the predictor as gpu predictor so when i call a predictor as gpu predictor it's going to execute the particular model on a gpu right now i am what i'm going to do is i'm just uh, taking and loading the model i am loading the same model the only thing is instead of cpu i am calling a gpu predictor so that i can inference on a gpu now what happens when you inference on a gpu the model gets loaded into gpu memory now before going there let me quickly go to the runtime and say manage session and you can see basically the ram is used only 0.41 gb of ram is used uh, why i am showing this is you also need to see how much of memory xgboost model occupies and how much of memory hummingbird model will occupy right so this is using only 0.41 gb of memory so let me close this the top one is still running uh, the reason is the first iteration will take time the after that it will be very fast if you rerun it it will be very fast because of the huge data set 140k uh, data set now uh, I, the next part is i have loaded the memory into gpu now what i am going to do is now if you really see it's the first one if you you can see the slowest run took 20896 times longer than the fastest because the first one is going to take lot of time but if you see the best run was only 4.82 milliseconds uh, per loop right so uh, basically uh, what happened like 319 microsecond for uh, 10k records for 120 145k records it took around 4.82 millisecond uh, to do batch inferencing so we saw real time inferencing that is record by record we saw batch inferencing which is for 145k record now i have loaded this model in gpu memory let me test in gpu so let me do for one record 10k record and then all record this will be very fast uh, compared to the cpu all three is done now if you see over here for one record it took 41.1 microsecond and if you see the cpu itself took only uh 14.1 microsecond so cpu is faster for a single record and that's valid because uh tree based models are not mathematically uh computer mathematically intensive you don't need a gpu really you can do in cpu itself right but when i am doing for a lot of records right for example here it took around 319 microsecond and 4.82 millisecond here you can see basically it took around 47 and 69.3 microsecond right very it's very faster the 10k records and sorry 69.3 and 644 microseconds basically the 10k record and the all records are very fast uh, compared to your cpu that's because once the data is in gpu you can do very fast inferencing right and uh, xgboost model by default is um, by uh, by default is optimized for uh, gpu right so this is about xgboost model now we have this benchmark right you can see most of the sat sentence in microsecond now let's see like how hummingbird performs now when it comes to yummy hummingbird the very first thing we do is we install hummingbird ml uh, now as i said it's a microsoft framework you can go to github repo and read more about it uh, what i'm doing is i'm doing a pip install hummingbird uh, hyphen ml and i've already done it to save time for the video uh, then I am importing. I ran ran few steps because the initial steps takes a lot of time. I don't want everybody to wait on the video. So uh, what I have done is like I have imported Torch. Now by default, what Hummingbird does is it uh, converts this particular uh, package to PyTorch. PyTorch is only one of the framework it converts into. There are other options as well uh, for tensor computation. It uses PyTorch. So that's why I am importing Torch. I am importing Hummingbird ML, and I also am importing XGBoost because that's the model we are going to test it now. Uh, the next thing what I am doing is I am doing the same numpy uh, file load that I did on the top. Uh, I am just loading the test.numpy file which has the data and if you see there are 145k records similar to what we did in the XGBoost model. And the next thing I am doing is I am loading the model. Uh, I am using an XGBoost classifier, XGB classifier. Currently Hummingbird supports only uh, scikit-learn based classifier. So I am using XGBoost uh, classifier which is scikit-learn's XGBoost package. And then I am loading the model. And then what I am doing is I am using this uh, hummingbird ML convert method. I am I am passing the model object which I have uh, get on top, which I have created on top. I am basically converting that into an uh, PyTorch uh, tensor. And I am also telling the number of features is 54. That is the extra configuration I am uh, passing. I have ran till here. Uh, the reason is this convert takes time. It converts takes around like four to five minutes, right? So I have already run this. Now from here, now the model is loaded. The HB underscore model is the output, hummingbird model. And let's start benchmarking this and compare against our 
um, compare against our GPU code, uh, compare against our HD, HD, XGBoost native code, right? So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run for one record, right? Now, when I'm running for one record and let me really run it for uh, 10,000 records as well. So I have started, it started. So it's take around 8.49 milliseconds. That's the best run. I'm doing the same thing, best out of three runs. Uh, the best it took is 8.49 milliseconds. Now, if you scroll on the top, right if you scroll on the top the the cpu for one took only 14.1 microsecond right and the gpu uh basically we are we are we still on uh gpu we are still on cpu in ambing bird but the cpu took around only 14.4 microsecond and the gpu in this case took 47.1 microsecond right so here it is 8.49 millisecond which is pretty high compared to the normal native XGBoost execution right the next is i have ran for 10000 records it's still running uh, the the problem that i have seen with hummingbird uh, session is it it occupies lot of cpu it occupies it takes lot of time for batch execution right so i'm going to allow it to run for a few more seconds but let's quickly go and check the uh, output here if you see earlier it was using only 0.49 gb of memory now it is using 4.86 gb of memory so it's literally taking a lot of memory compared to your typical XGBoost model. So the Hummingbird for XGBoost is not memory efficient as well. It, it's not performance efficient. We have still done a complete benchmark. We'll go to GPU and see because GPU is the main. Uh, tensors are more optimized for GPUs. So let's go to GPU and see. But what you are seeing is basically 10,000 is still running. And uh, even after like 10 minutes, you can see it running. Uh, it's going to take a lot of time. The first one takes a lot of time. Maybe after that, I have not. So I'm going to stop this and move forward, right? And I'm going to go directly to GPU because that is the main strength of Hummingbird as per the paper, right? So I, I have stopped this particular one. Uh, I, I have not tested for 10K records and also 145K records on uh, CPU because it does not it does not really work. If I use 145K records, it will tell memory error, right? Uh, now let me go and load this model to CUDA, which is GPU. So let me load this model to CUDA. Uh, it's going to, what it's going to take, do is it's going to take that uh, Hummingbird model. Uh, now, whatever we are done on CPU, we are going to do in GPU. It's going to take it and load it in CUDA. It has grown it to CUDA and it's just printing the output. And you can see like all the parameter list of uh, tensors it has created on the GPU. Uh, here we have, we have only one GPU, so everything is on one GPU. Let me uh, again go to the uh, runtime manage session and check it out you can see the gpu used is 0.81 uh, gb all right we have close to around 16 gb right only 0.81 is used now let me start doing an uh, prediction of single record and then the 10000 record let me run these two so the single record took 1.17 millisecond which is better than hummingbird cpu which took around uh, i think it took around 8.49 millisecond but still it is not great compared to what uh, XGBoost native took. XGBoost native took only 47.1 microsecond, which is like way too fast. It is uh, multiple X faster. And in fact, the CPU itself was very fast uh, when it comes to uh, the XGBoost native model, right? And similarly, even for, if you take for 10,000 records, it is taking around 180 millisecond. And uh, that, if you see the XGBoot, it was still in microsecond. It was it was way fast, even for 10,000 record. Let me go again to the runtime and see the GPU usage. Now the GPU usage for has bumped up to literally 4.27 GB. Um, and uh, when when I was using XGBoost, it was it was literally like 0.2 uh, or 0.5 uh, GB usage. So uh, the GPU usage has literally bumped up. Now. The final thing I want to check is for 125k records. Does it work? If you if you saw like uh, XGBoost uh, native on GPU, it really worked. It was uh, still taking only microseconds, right? Let me run this, and you can see basically immediately it throws an uh, CUDA out of memory error. So what what I'm seeing our output uh, of Hummingbird at least for the XGBoost model, and reason why I have tested XGBoost, XGBoost is the uh, uh, most popularly used uh, ensemble modeling technique. So I have used XGBoost. Uh, this, uh, if you take the same XGBoost model, XGBoost native performs way faster. You really need not uh, need to have tensor computation. Even XGBoost supports GPU and you can directly use XGBoost. And XGBoost is very memory efficient. 
because you don't want uh, you don't want one single model to just converted into uh, tensor computation you occupying all the memories um, so if you are thinking about exeboost you do your own benchmark this is just my benchmark that i have done but but you really see if it's worth it for you uh, to really do that maybe it will get better over time but i still feel like exeboost will be way faster than native method right yeah that's it about it thank you very much